do. We're on. What? Hey, everybody. Welcome to. Bar- I'm not the host tonight. That's Carol's. Ha, ha, ha. I'll let Carol do that. We're co hosting, actually. I host the first half because I didn't play any games this week. And, then and he I'm hosts- a power bottom. <laughs> and he's hosting the second half with our actual discussion for the night gnomes versus halflings nope. battle of the shorty shorts so hi everyone uh uh well hi i'll give you my introduction uh my name is carol i'm hosting so at the top part of this i'm a what am i i'm a longtime gamer a casual gm and a commission mini painter and i'm gonna go around i'm gonna change the way we do this opening so uh, I'll get to all the other good bits what? after the cast introduce themselves first. What? Because why not? So, hey, Kyle, introduce yourself since you're hey. my host. Everybody, uh, as I said before, I am the bottom power uh, and I know stuff. That's why I'm always on the show with David. <laughs> David, you introduce yourself. Nice oh, throw great, to great, him. Great. Hi, my name is. David. <laughs> I'm one of the murder hobos that are on our Thursday show for Cacophony and also our Saturday uh, campaign show, uh, the Calamity campaign. Uh, I play Zadar the Changeling, and uh, on Calamity, I play Ingve the Druid. So, and other, other nights you can catch me here on BTR <laughs> most of the time. So, that's me. Throw it to Frank. Frank, and over to Frank. Frank's not paying attention. Frank missed the ball. Hey, everybody, I'm Frank. (laughs) Uh, If you don't know who I am, you must be new, so welcome. Everybody else knows who I am. Uh, Don't forget, if you want to be on this show or on a one-shot next Saturday, mhoboinc, uh, Twitter or Gmail, we will get you on there. Uh, If you need to contact me, you can catch me there, too. Back to Carol. Oh, wow, you're starting to steal the rest of the interest for me. Oh, yes. And, and of course, Kyle and I are on the Thursday night Craig campaign. Kyle runs it and he's the awesome GM who's torturing all of us. No. It's friggin' fantastic. I love I love uh, playing. Uh, all right. So as for the normal other housekeeping things, of course, it's follow us on Twitch if you want. Uh, best way to find out when we're on the air and we're on the air quite a bit these days. Follow us on Twitter to get all the crazy memes that Frank posts. And of course we have a YouTube archive where all our stuff is. Uh, Well, let me not all of it. That's under Dungeon Master, right? Yeah, it's under Dungeon Master. You didn't- Couldn't get it. You didn't stick with brand. Oh, you couldn't get it? So I suggest YouTube really hated murder. Dungeon Master. Wow. So type in Dungeon Master M Hobo Inc. And you will eventually find us. Tinyurl.com slash mhobo ink archive. Easy oh, as well. Actually, there you go. That's actually, better. actually, I'll put this way. The way I would find it uh, before I hit the subscribe button there um, is I actually would type in Murder Hobo Ink and one of your introductory um, uh, videos. Introductory. I believe it was. It was about get in your head, man. That was that actually is what would pop up and that make it really easy for me to find. Just uh, uh, just Google best fucking podcast on the planet. Ever. Yeah, we are. All right. And then of course we do if you want to shoot the shit about D D or life or anything else, we do have a Discord you could join. Uh, and, and I have a great story about what happened on our anniversary and how the only person working at the hotel quit in the middle of her shift. Find that out on the Discord story, though. What? What? You didn't post that yet, though. I oh, haven't uh-huh. posted that. Ah, no, it's soon to be. It's soon to be. And then, of course, finally, you can buy crap in our store. And I also think that's on here somewhere. Uh, that's the on bottom. the uh, screen, bottom of the screen. Yeah, that's right. it's a bottom screen. It's also a power bottom. Uh, you know what? It's pretty good crap because I wear this sweatshirt all the time. And um, although you can't buy this, these were pranks, but the special, this is what happens when you participate in Murder Week. You get swag every so often uh, from the boss. Uh, let's see. And of course, let's see. Oh, we have an audio only podcast at Tony Rural at Murder Hobo Inc. Audio, oh, slash Murder M Hobo Inc. Audio. God, I can't do this right now. 
Uh, uh -huh. You know, if you don't want to, as Frank likes to say, you don't want to look at these faces. Although I don't know why. I think my face it looks perfectly good. I'm not um, clean shaven. That's why I don't <laughs> want to look at this face. Your face is fine. Whoops. At Harry. least your ass crack isn't on there. Yet, That's I am true. out in the garage. It is hot. I am not fully clothed. It's not going to be hot for long. Those storm clouds are coming in. And oh, thank God. Here, here in the you north, know, it's ugly. You know, you know what? Uh, that's true. Actually, if you do watch, if you do do the audio uh, version, you don't have to look at ass cracks that pop up every so often for people chasing cats. We uh, only do it for charity. Accidentally twitch those pop up accidentally. Yeah, twitch they really. I are. dropped my D twenty. It was terrible. Nah, it's that you said. What the worst cat, part is know? is I rolled a natural twenty and Frank wouldn't let me keep it. Yeah, because we knew where that twenty that twenty's been. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and last but not least, of course, we have to thank our awesome sponsors. Uh, first, I'll go with Odd Fish Games, makers of Adventure Sense, which are where is it? Uh, I do. Yep, right here, right here. Right here. I've got oh. it. No, I've got it. I've got it. We got it going on, folks. There go. I got. I got my fabulous. little bag of uh, scent. Um, don't don't snort it. Good. Don't snort it. I don't snort it. I'm not okay. stupid like you. And it's hey, not. Hey. It also smells way better than that future tour stuff because this is the. This is. Uh, I can't read it from here. It's much but better. But you than know the what? It's not the all game. games are sunshine and roses. Sometimes you get deep, dark in that sewer. You see a these, little turd floating around with a dog what, on it. What these are good for, though, is to bring atmosphere to your games. So if your game stinks, your room won't, but also bring atmosphere. So if you want it, smell like, it to smell like you're in a welcoming in, that's what this smells like. And actually, that is a pretty good description. Um, they also make the shine system, and they're working on a hard RPG with your cat. And also they have a cookbook, and, and I can't remember if there's anything else. I think that's... We the, got the big announcement, but that's... Not next week. week. That's next, next week. Next week. Oh yeah. my gosh, guys, you have to tune in for tune it. Tune in next week. Hype. What? It's what? Yeah. there is. Yeah, he's right. What? There is a very big announcement next yeah. week of something we're planning. So. Oh yeah. It'll nope. be. I wish we had Lil John on the, on the show. What? <laughs> I, I I wish he'd do his. Uh, you only need the edge of the seat part. <laughs> oh, I will. I you will may. do that. If you have me next Tuesday, I'll and, definitely. And and you know what? It's not going to be like it's not a teaser to get you to watch the show either, because the show I'm pretty sure is going to be dedicated to this very topic. So it's you'll find out probably right after the games or huge, at the beginning. Huge folks, Monster it's a huge. Size. It really yeah. is a huge announcement. And it's really cool. Um, we might wear tuxedos. Mm -hmm. Don't know. I don't have a tuxedo. I so. worn my tuxedo in yep. a Birthday suit it is for Carol. Yep. Woo! Well, there's a I reason to watch. No, 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 no. If you're into 50-year-olds, <laughs> sure. Uh, all right. Anywho, anywho, let's actually get to uh, points of discussion here. So, of course, the first half of this is all going to be uh, a little snippets of uh, the games that were run this week. And this Let's is going to be a lot of Frank because Frank did actually both. Fra David Frank knows how to him. recap shit. It ain't going to be a <laughs> lot. Hold on, of Frank. I like this. It's going to be a lot of Frank. So David, why don't you start us? No, uh, did you do a screen he, capture? Frozen? Yeah, I think he's frozen. Is he frozen? Let it go. Oh, he's dicking oh, around. He's gonna... Am I dicking around? No, no, he's no, not. You're <laughs> All right, you're still on, but all right. So, but the first, you know, David will be first, and then it'll be lots of Frank. Although, David, you could definitely. Oh no, actually, you didn't have anything to do with Saturday, did you? Am I back now? I'm forgetting which week it is. Okay, so first, the first, uh, the first episode we cover is episode 245, and it's the Calamity Campaign. So, David, what the fuck happened? You misread that. It says Calamity, but it was Cacophony. Oh, cacophony. <laughs> Why did you? You're right. You uh, eat. It's been a I long day it. and it hasn't gotten any better tonight. So. Oh, that's, he that is say, fine. He could say that again. It has been a friggin' it's only Tuesday and it's been a really fucking long week. So anyway, <laughs> right, it's right. cacophony. It's it our, is cacophony. Our episode 245, I believe. He did, he did get that right. Yes. Yes. Episode 245 for the Murder Hobo. 
So cacophony. Yes, this one is called Frost uh, Frost Giants in Danger. At least that's what I'm calling it. So uh, it starts off with our intrepid team, our our, our trio uh, plus one Aerosmith uh, in the frozen lands of Freckland. We did not know where we were. We kind of got it confirmed that we were there, but we are lost, folks. We were lost. Uh, after being attacked by frost wolves, we uh, we spotted a figure on a ridge. Turned out to be a um, little older woman. Um, congratulated us on our victory and offered us food. <laughs> a lot of us were trepidatious about taking it but turned out it was legit she invited us back uh to her domicile which looks like a teepee but is actually larger on the inside like a tardis uh tardis wait it's a tardis teepee could be so anyway uh yeah it turns out that our our friendly druidish artificer is um yeah uh invited us back offered us more food. She had this wonderland basically inside. She had trophy heads all over the room and all that, but they were all live and animated and were like happy to be there. Why does so, Frank have a thing with heads on walls that are animated? Was oh, that, come on. Come on. That, that was Frank. That oh, was Frank. Yeah, he, did right. it, he did it on a Saturday game too. It's oh. called flavor, Carol. It's called flavor. <laughs> yeah. he, he must be he a big really fan of the cut. Evil Dead. He, I was going to say that he's a fan of the Country Bear Jamboree because I get the animal heads to talk to you on the walls. I'm, I'm not allowed to be there anymore. <laughs> Security and I have a disagreement falling out. Anyway, well, they are not completely animatronic no matter what they tell you. No, no, no. Just imagine. Some of them uh, are real. Yeah, yeah. The Nightmare Showbiz <laughs> Pizza <laughs> Power <laughs> Bottoms. Oh, my God. Oh, man. So anyway, our uh, gracious host uh, introduces uh, us to her servant, Jasper, who uh, proceeds to fix us glorious food. Uh, she uh, hears something outside and excuses herself. She has to, she had business she had to attend to. We had the run of the place while she was gone, made ourselves at home, especially Aerosmith on this wide king size bed covered in furs. Uh, just made himself at home. A uh, few hours later, our host returns all bloodied and scarred up and yeah, starts stripping off clothes and heading on into bed to recuperate with Aerosmith and Daphne laying there <laughs> in the bed. So yeah. Well, um, <clears throat> hey, it was for warmth, folks. Oh, anyway. sure, 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 sure. Well, it, it's Daphne. So uh, in the morning, uh, we <laughs> arise. Uh, we hear some other kind of uh, noise outside the tent. So we go and check it out. And Aerosmith has a conniption because the airship is gone. <gasps> so hence, we had a search for the airship. Followed some some clues, decided to look up at, at the trees. And sure enough, there were signs of something large moving through the trees, carrying the, the airship. We find the air, airship discarded on an escarpment uh, with steps that led down to a pretty sizable fortress. So as we try to get the airship aloft again, uh, yeah, we, we garner the attention of the juvenile frost giant that uh, had it, was using it as a toy. Comes running out, daddy, daddy, somebody's taking my toy. Two of the, uh, the father and the son come out. The ship takes off. They manage to grab a hold of it for uh, somehow. And uh, yeah, anyway, uh, Axes were swung, Daphne was hit, death saves were thrown, and uh, yeah, but we got aloft, we saved Daphne, and crash land, landed, luckily, at the, the tribe of our gracious host. All this because 
the only person that we know in Freckland is a barbarian friend named Stinky, and nobody knows who that is. So, anyway, that was the episode, folks. On to you, Carol. And then we're going to go for Frank. Actually, you know, I'll just put them together. So, Frank's going to cover both episodes. What the hell? Okay, 246 and 247. So, 246 was the Tower of Hate. H-A-I-G-H-T. Is that how you pronounce it? Yep. As and in Hate and Sir Ashbury. Yes. And what's exciting about that, too, we had three new players for that night. And, and John. The fourth one and got John. Hello. Yeah. yeah. Gosh, John, He's our newest the hobo. Swag yep. John, That's uh, true. That That's right. John's John third. gets swag. Yep. Mm-hmm. See, I told you to get swag if you do the show. And then uh, then after that would be the the tri-generation of Frank game. So yes. go ahead. Just describe them both. 246 Saturday's scenario was Tower of Hate, as Carol's pointed out. We had three new players and John. Uh, the four second level PCs were looking for a nice place to stay as they crossed the frontier. Uh, and a storm, because I like to light up my players, was approaching. Uh, <laughs> fortunately, they found a Mott and Bailey fortress uh, and went there to seek refuge. As, uh, upon entering, they discovered that the Lord of the Manor uh, was dispensing justice his way. Uh, there was a slight argument uh, between uh, the players and Lord Sir Ashbury, uh, but that was quickly dispelled, uh, making the players think twice. Uh, it had two gnomes and uh, a variant human and a regular uh-huh. human. Uh, what happened was they went in uh, to the area. Uh, Sir Ashbury pointed out that uh, he liked adventurers and wanted to talk to him. He was exceptionally personable, invited them to dinner. Yada, yada, yada. Uh, Until the players could actually get to the tower, they got to roam around the, uh, I think, 11 or 10 building uh, community. Uh, There they ran into a wee bit of trouble uh, with some mouthy guards, met uh, (coughs) an individual named Nebels who'd been kicked in the head growing up and was kind of different and they also got to meet i like uh, turtles mr <laughs> mr missing pinky yes uh Nebels and myself as well as daniel tosh all like turtles and autumn autumn also uh autumn like reference. Them. so do we in this house we love turtles here so we had uh colleen kevin autumn and as our three new players welcome aboard and john of course uh, showing up for his third attempt so he gets swag uh wait a second wait a second the three new players say they'll be back? Uh, at, yeah. least, at least two of them wanted on the email list. So yeah. Oh, no. The, the one I nearly killed? Eh, not so much. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to be oh, fair, really? uh, the players yeah. actually came close to killing each other off. Mm-hmm. Not I. I rolled <laughs> uh, poorly, to say the least. Uh, anyway, there is, of course... A twist in here, but you're going to have to check the archive for that. Again, that's tinyurl.com slash mhoboinkarchive. Uh, check it out. It's still on Twitch if you want to see it. Sunday's game, 247 Esteban Montoya, related to uh, Rodrigo Montoya, who the Frank group dealt with in Lightreach to unfortunate ends they recovered the jewel from corpus keep and need to hump it back to the sisters of the moonlight in order to remove their geese gaze or quest spell uh as you can imagine when they headed to corpus Cre- corpus keep they created some anomalous criminal behavior uh, now they're coming back the same way. Uh, they ran into the gnome singing group who, as it turns out, uh, ripped off the music festival. So they beat the Nazis to the punch. Uh, the group also got to meet the Pachyderm Corps, uh, which General uh, Montoya is the head of. Uh, please keep an eye on me as Kyle kills himself. Yeah. <laughs> his bench. What, what uh, the fuck are you doing, man? He's adjusting his lighting. He must be, because this is 
Uh, uh, fortunately, they uh, got <laughs> successfully oh past the roadhouse where they caused so much grief. However, horsemen soon followed and are in hot pursuit. These guys are not out of the woods yet. They still have two and a half days to get there. Uh, and they have three days to do it. Uh, so things look rosy, except for everybody pursuing them. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the quick recap on Esteban Montoya. Side note, Copias Vol Bitters the <coughs> Third really likes the tailor, uh, because Mr. or General Montoya has the, uh, Commodore hat and the, uh, brushes on the shoulders, so mm-hmm. as soon as they reach the capital city of the Halflings, Copius is going on a spending spree, if they can reach. Carol, back to you. Well, wait, did you say something about Halfling? I don't think we can throw it to Kyle to start the next part. I mean... Uh, please just, note that they uh, the, Fra- the Frank group was it. They are, not was. Uh, they are in the Halfling Kingdom. Uh, however, Copious Vol Bitters III is a gnome. Uh, his son, who plays Haga's Crapstain, uh, is a Halfling in that. Uh, but currently they are going through uh, the Halfling <laughs> Kingdom. Uh, and as we watch the bumbling old man kind of wander around. <laughs> Just kind around of stumbling sad, through. <laughs> uh, we'll continue oh, to yammer Lord. on. And I will I will reiterate what we've already said before. Next Tuesday, uh, kind, kind of an interesting show. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, maybe you like it, maybe you don't. It, but I, I think you're going to like what we've got to uh, pitch to you. It's It really is a big announcement. And we've already been working hard on it. So... Um, the other thing I'll say, too, coming up this week, of course, I'll pitch our games. Uh, this week is campaign week. So we have we have the cred campaign, of course, on Thursday night, which is Cthulhu meets D&D. That's the it is, seventh best campaign we have on our show, right? Bullshit. So. It's the best campaign on this channel. The best channel. part is we actually only have three campaigns on our show. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Wait, three? Yeah. No, I think we have three. Oh, we have we got four. We have four. All right. I'm sorry, four but I don't now. care what you fuckers say. Cacophony is a campaign. And cred is right there below it. No way. No way. Cred is the best. And so tune in at, what, 8 o'clock on Thursday Eastern time yep. to see where it's all going to lead. Uh, I think it's going to lead to us trying to find the mutinous uh, crew members. <laughs> He's laughing. We'll probably all just go crazy and it'll be the end of it. And of course, Saturday. Respect to this episode. (laughs) Well, now that Kyle's back, but you know what? It wouldn't be fair if I didn't give a little equal time to the Calamity campaign, because that's Saturday night, also at 8 o'clock Eastern Time, right here on this Bat Channel. And that is also awesome, should be told. All right, Kyle. Awesome. You're in. You're no, 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 no. It's just, it's awesome. Cred is, you know, I can actually stay awake lit. during the calamity uh show. <laughs> well, to be fair, if I drank that much watching the cred campaign, I'd pass out drunk, too. exactly. <laughs> that's true, yeah. And you know, maybe that's maybe it's because the cred campaigns were smarter. People. I swear, I nearly passed out for I, taking I, a shot <laughs> on every one that DJ rolled. So. Yeah. So, so you guys have had eight episodes, and if you gathered all of your dice rolls together, it had reached, what, 200? You guys blow. Kyle should have killed <laughs> all of you already. <laughs> That's because his dice roll don't, his dice rolls aren't awesome either, so it's sort of no, right it's him being a merciful DM. Is it's what me he's... being a merciful DM. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, fine. It's your turn. Anyways, I don't like merciful DMs. I like to... Oh, okay. I will begin... Gloves are off now, bud. <laughs> I don't wear gloves, and my hands are really sweaty. I should probably wear gloves. Anyway, guys, we are here tonight. We don't care about what happened last week. We do care about what happens yeah. this following week. But that's not happening yet, because we're here <laughs> now. And since this is this week, this matters right now, and we're going to talk about gnomes and halflings. Halflings. Halflings, absolutely. Anyone got me some good origins, some good lore on gnomes and or halflings? Anyone? 
Find the halflings! Dragonlance, um, baby. Yes. Dragonlance. Dragonlance. I would say Dragonlance for gnomes and probably... Tasseloff Burfoot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Greatest I mean, halfling but... ever. No idea who that is. Tasseloff, isn't he a kender, which is not... That's another thing altogether. He's kin to David. Yeah, no. Ta kender are not quite... They're not the same as, as gnomes. No, they're, their they're, own they're more like halflings. They're more like up. halflings. They're their own fucked up entity, actually. I don't no. think they're fucked up. They're well, uh, they're nice. Uh, nice. Did the yeah, SS shit. Carol make port today, or you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, by the way. I I actually really like. No, she's halflings. not. She uh, says sorry. fuck gnomes. They're like tabaxi. Yeah, she hates totally, them. totally uh, racist. Wow, no. that explains why she hated Dewey so much. Mm -hmm. I played a gnome. I mean. Uh, what? I had a. She has a lot a of gnome clerk. friends. <laughs> no, I played mm -hmm. one, you twip. My, my grave cleric was a gnome. Dewey was one of the good ones. You know? <laughs> That's what she said so many times. You know what? Dewey! You're Dewey. one of the good ones. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> No, she didn't. I, Maybe I, I would actually be party. your friend. Hey, you're all a bunch of evil fucks, but Dewey, you're you're one of the good ones, <laughs> sort of. For a gnome, you're about as good as you can get. Yeah, I never said that. that you know what? That's, I think okay. that's how I heard it. Yeah, no. Well, of course, it's how you hear it. What does this have to do Show with Show hands. Is she a racist? I had she raised one too. <laughs> yeah, I did. I raised that because you got uh, that's about off. halfling size there, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So Luda, Luda, Luda but we've got yeah. Let's start with halflings off. here first, I guess. So halflings, origins of that. Those uh stem from our token, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. I would say Lord of the Rings and Hobbits. Yes. There you go. Yes. <laughs> and ever since then, everybody has loved Frodo. They've hated... No, they love Bilbo. They love Sam. No, they hate Sam. What? Sam no. is Rudy. Everybody loves Rudy. Rudy. Everybody Everyone loves, loves Rudy. Hell, no, That's I it. liked I liked Sam. Sam was what caused the parties to succeed there. Exactly. And Don't no one up, likes Frodo. that character in a PC game. In a D&D &D game. No one likes that character. Yeah. Right, what? Carol? No, I'd love that character. Uh-oh. Oh, oh you Robo just check it out again. Down. We're going to have to run a land cord from your house to your garage one of these days. Although Do we, we have any we, idea what We, we are getting had. a storm, by the way. So yeah. Kyle and I are in the are same we? town. Yeah. It's <clears> moving <throat> in. Um. Anyway, uh, so we have some white Gamgee from there. We moved to Lance where we became Kenders. I still roboing out. Yeah, yeah, you are but... big time. I'm probably gonna be gone then tonight. Hope it doesn't storm on Thursday night. It's too bad because it'd be good for atmosphere. Uh, and I think we're gonna get those storms here tomorrow. So fortunately, it'll be in between podcasts. It'll be Perfect. just it'll <laughs> just be during my audio one that I do. Okay, so. <laughs> but whatever. But no, I think uh, we're gonna lose them. All right, what do you want to talk about then about this? Because poor Kyle, I don't think can run well, this let's, let's, at the moment. He's let, there. He's good. He's there. He's just Let's dig in the halflings a little bit more. All right, yeah. thank God you're still okay. You yeah, didn't no, get you're killed. Fine. All right. Mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, it's your internet that's the problem. No, it isn't. <laughs> My internet's good. You need to you need to get Arlo off the iPhone, man. <laughs> get, get Arlo off no of OnlyFans downloading <laughs> shit. Uh. All right. Whoa, whoa. My son is no lazy <laughs> downloader. He's the one uploading. Uh. <laughs> oh. Nice. All nice. right, anyways, anyways, what were you saying because you did robot out there? <clears throat> I was talking about Dragonlance into Kenders and then obviously yeah. we moved into Fragat and Realms <coughs> with Halflings, uh pure and simple as the name goes. Um any popular Halflings in lore that you guys want to talk about? Um or just hit on a little bit. I uh, believe Regis speaking of Forgotten Realms. Oh, Regis mm -hmm. is a good one. Yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, if you read one of the good ones, huh? Explain yeah. a little bit further there. One of the best characters. What's that? Uh, go Regis. into it a little bit further for those who don't know uh, uh, Regis. Frank. Frank doesn't know. There you what? go. Not you a, don't know? I, I, you I'm don't not know a Forgotten Regis? Realms guy. 
Yeah, basically, he's uh, he's he's the halfling hero in all the Drizzt. Or yeah, I I stopped. Unfortunately, I stopped reading the Drizzt stories a while ago. Fortunately, I gotta get back into it. No, I would. I really enjoy them, and I and I do. And Regis Regis was a fun character. I mean, he brought a, a lot of levity. You know, I think he you would say he was the comic relief to a degree, but he was. But he was he was a he was tough. I mean, he went through all sorts of he had his bad shit to happen to him. Um, he actually was the sort of character I like to play. Somebody that has uh, he had a, a Pasha, which is a really powerful. I mean, you can tell from the title. Uh, he had a Pasha after him. I forget, it's been so many years. I forget why. I want to say owed him money because this is now. He said he's a rogue, so he was good at all the lock picking and stuff and. And I said he brought a lot of levity to the stories. What? Oh no, no, you're fine. No, you're we're no, we're, we're, was... intri- we're intrigued. Yes. So. Yeah, I'm oh, sure you are. Sure. About you this are. Regis who stole I get that it. amulet that would help him mind control people. That's what it was. Mm-hmm. And yeah, he did. I but always he, hated him. He was, he was a was little so ass. <laughs> he was yeah, I mean he was he was questionable, but he was a hero. He we definitely was on ultimately he's on the right side especially mm-hmm. when he started hanging out with Bruner and Drizzt and them all right you guys said it's been a long about, time you guys were talking about Tasselhoff I don't read Dragonlance who's Tasselhoff yeah tell us about Tasselhoff Frank he's essentially the same thing he's a kender which is a halfling race he gets himself into assholes and elbows trouble uh, his best friend is an elderly dwarf who likes him but can't stand him uh tasseloff <laughs> has ridden a dragon handled the dragon lance done time travel to fuck up the world completely uh and was best friends with fizzbin the mage aka a deity uh he was a beloved character in that series and always yeah. good for like every other halfling on the planet comic relief uh, yeah, but he uh, his uh, his antics were hilarious. But when he accidentally jumped back in time before half or before Kinder were created uh, and screwed up the timeline, priceless. I yeah, he's he's an interesting character. I mean, I've read a lot of the books, but believe me, DJ read all the books, and he loves. He absolutely loves that character, and so he talks plenty about him. So I get bits and I get a plenty of the story, you know, through osmosis from him. But didn't he? Is he also at one point he also because Kender don't feel fear. Correct. But didn't he once well, actually he, feel fear when he met Lord Soth? That's he, he felt fear. Lord Soth yeah. is the Lich Warlord. The true bbg of the dragonlance series uh Mm -hmm. red glowing ember eyes and uh he actually was the uh historian the only one to escape from raven law yeah because mine (laughs) soth no soth's not not really part of the description but the interesting thing about soth is he ultimately did redeem himself and he became he, he escaped raven law because Ravenloft didn't like the fact he accepted that he had done wrong and threw him out. And then he... I How the fuck did he get to Ravenloft? That's just lazy writing yeah, right there. That's No, he was, he, was, he, was, he was a domain lord for a long-ass time in game terms. Still is. He's, no, he isn't. No, he isn't. No. They kicked him out, and he's dead. He's actually dead, dead in canon right now. I haven't seen him in this book. He's not in that. Did I nah. miss Stay him? Tuned. No, he's not. He's no. not Listen in to me. that book Stay now. tuned. He's coming. So, oh, I, that sounded bad. But you know what I mean. But he's. They're, they're going to bring him back. You he's, know what? The white on the black armor, it just really stands out in the rose. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's a knight of Salomnia. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He, right. he was top tier uh, in the hierarchy. And then he decided to go off and bang elven maids instead of warn everybody about the coming cataclysm. And That's right. Dick, yep. Thinking with his dick. Wow. And he set fire to his wife and his whole <laughs> household. And, and that's what got him into rape. Nice guy. Kind of yep. a dick. Bit of a dick. 
that he re- but I guess he <clears throat> repented or something and he ended up getting kicked out because it's, it's, apparently it's, not but we'll find out later we'll find oh, out oh no no he's to not which i must no, ask he's, the important he's Carol, not in that we've book. got to talk about halflings i was about All to right. say <laughs> and there we say mary pippin sam frodo bilbo david who's mm-hmm. yours choice and why oh Bilbo, actually. <laughs> oh, yeah, obviously. Yeah. I mean, I asked the question, but I knew the answer. But but halflings, I mean, don't just permeate through D and D uh, and uh, Tolkien lore. Um, as a matter of fact, there's an author here in Tennessee <laughs> who writes about a world kind of like the world uh, Tolkien created, and they have a halfling race called Bobbins, and pretty much pretty much halfling um Where so much so writing? well kind of but <laughs> uh but it's really become a thing uh, especially here in tennessee they built a fantasy village and it's basically the shire that's an actual place that you can go here in knoxville is nice. that near noah's ark no it's not <laughs> they won't in, in that in ohio <laughs> Might be in Kentucky. I think it's in Ohio. Kentucky people are uh, normally on the lower end of the uh, <laughs> intelligence scale. And yeah, but I just in, said that. <laughs> but anyway, I None digress. Uh, you know, it, the the lore of a halfling is becoming popular. I'm sure there are other authors out there that have written similar races uh, based on Hobbiton. So. I mean, yeah, no. I mean, they're just so brand spanking new. I, I don't think I've seen anything. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, no, you're wrong. You're just absolutely wrong. I'm completely wrong today. <laughs> All right, which brings us back to their competitors, gnomes. Mm-hmm. Wonderful creatures. They've been around forever. Uh, in a few cases, they're descendants from red caps, which is where you get your garden gnomes with their red hats because they dip them in your blood. Yep. Gnomes are fucking awful. But uh, uh, not all yeah. of them. Jesus, you tell me you're racist, man. You just call them all fucking awful, and they're not. Carol, we don't need your virtual signaling <laughs> right now. Uh, so I want right, to hear. Uh, but we get I want to hear you correctly pronounce the name of the race of the the gnomes in the Underdark. How do you pronounce that? Snurfniblin. Yeah, Snurf. Yeah. What Sir- is- Sir Snurf. Snivlin? Snurf. Snurf Snivlin. No, oh, now you've made it. Fucked me up. I've got to actually look at the word now. Snurf Dang it. Snivlin. Deep Snurf. Snivlin. Gnomes. Snurf Deep Snivlin. Gnomes. Deep gnomes. Just gnomes. know that. Yeah. Oh, they are awesome. Mm-hmm. I actually really did. That was, that was another part Snurf of the Snivlin. books I Snurf really liked Snivlin. was when he visited their city. Yeah. So, but I mean, yeah, gnomes cool. are are pretty cool uh between halflings and gnomes i mean they're always portrayed like halflings are usually portrayed as troublemakers thieves things like that i mean bilbo was was hired to be a thief Um, they're indulgent they love uh luxury and leisure and mm -hmm. such too that's hospitality hospitality yeah i like that (laughs) i love (laughs) that too um but also, like um, with gnomes, every everybody has pretty much has seen gnomes more as your artificer or tinkerer or clockwork uh, creator and things like that. I mean, as far as I've known, I've yeah, seen. as far as the yeah, difference like... between dwarves and gnomes are, gnomes work on the smaller, finer stuff. Actually, I think gnomes make more discoveries. They experiment more. They're more into curiosity and, uh, it said, and exploring things around them. I feel inventing. Like you get that from some different game that's not D and D. That's no, no, uh, that's no, uh, that's no, not no, the, actually, not at all. The I don't other know what you're thinking of thing that makes gnomes unique is that they have an innate <laughs> access to magic. Um, if, oh, that's true. When creating a gnome and all that, they they have they make great wizards and things like that. So, but yeah, I've always no, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what other game actually you're talking because I, I honestly, if you're, I don't know. But Mon- I've always Monopoly. St- no, I've always 
<laughs> no, I'm it's not, and I'm not guy. joking because I don't. With that think... mustache, he is obviously a gnome. That is a gnome. <laughs> Death don't pass go. Do not collect two hundred dollars. I guess no. A lot of the things is what do you have in Dragonlance? You have tinker gnomes, which are basically that's what they do. They tinker. They they invent things and such. And I feel like dwarves instead, dwarves they they like things that they you know no work. They like reliability and and such. And gnomes are a lot more free in their explorations and their creations. Hippies, hippies. They really oh, kind yeah, of are the other hippies too. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, yeah, no, I I like the gnomes. I mean, they're I mean, they're a great race to play. I, I've played them a couple of times. Only I mean, I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, when I like I said. When you min max, I mean, like a, they make good wizards. They make really good wizards. So, but, but yeah. So, yeah, no. so let's talk about gnomes and lore then. Uh, popular culture. Mm -hmm. I don't have any, I think, unless you think of Bell <coughs> or Disengulp. Yep. That's the, the one that popped to mind. The one that was in, yeah, the one they made friends what about with in the, the, the Deep Gnome City. What about, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yep, that's it. Wait. What about, All I know is. What about Dungeon Master from the cartoon series? Yeah. You see a gnome? Ah, that fat fuck. He had to be a gnome. He I didn't bald think of him. He wasn't a dwarf because he didn't mind. And plus, I he just was, thought he, he was had human. magic. I thought he was. Go. I thought he was a human wizard, but that's. That's very no very way. short. <laughs> he had to be I a mean, gnome. I guess he, these days they're short, man. I mean, was his nose big enough? <laughs> We always said that, that was one thing. Cindy Lou Who. No, totally. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah. I was thinking of one of the early, early campaigns I did. We had a we had a gnome thief in our in our party. And we said his he actually could smell treasure through his nose. And he had like this. He had like a big nose. So um, I'm convinced because the dice rolls, you know, the dice take a you know, giveth and taketh away. A lot of times they giveth when it came to him and finding treasure or finding things he should have found because <laughs> he did that too and blew up the campaign. I think uh, I think the first time that I've ever read anything with a gnome is when I was a kid, there was this huge art book and it's one of those coffee table books. It was just mm -hmm. huge, but it was gnomes and it's the typical red cap and all that. But it had complete lore in it, everything from where they live, how they lived, and, and things like that. And you're starting to see gnome lore like permeate, you know, different areas of pop culture. I mean, some video games even have them in them. Uh, and I'm not talking about uh, like fantasy games and stuff like that. I mean, even like sim building games, The Sims have gnomes in them, and it's pretty funny. Um, so you're starting to you're starting to see uh, more and more lore being written about gnomes. I I think probably wizards has something uh, in the mix. I mean, they um, when they released Vol uh, Mordenkainen's Tome of Foes, well, yeah, right. they they went they went more into more detail into the halfling and the the gnome background. So. But so we should start seeing seeing more. I mean, been, I mean, from what I understand, they're becoming popular. So, <laughs> oh, you know, all I could think of is wasn't in 4E they said gnomes were monsters or something like that. No one ever played 4E, so it's hard I to say. I know. That's what you yeah, it's remember, hard to say. I remember the little cartoon shorts they did, and I remember that they had, I think it was a gnome, and he's like, I'm a monster. Rawr, and for some reason that stupid bit has lived with us well and guys i'm says, gonna i'm gonna get her started okay what about that other game that you like so much are there gnomes in that yeah uh... <laughs> i mean but they're really it's really not much different i haven't really played any there so i don't know oh i don't okay. think Doesn't know. i Does don't that mean i know more than you oh my gosh that's probably not a surprise anymore no uh, she i probably as... hates gnomes you know yeah, yeah that's why those are the cat folks played, who are not uh, touching that hold on, hold on hold on hold on i've played one here you idiots 
Luna's a gnome. I mean, and what did she do with that? And what? And she what? Got a lot of friends that are gnomes. Yeah, I don't know. How to... <clears throat> They're all, all right. imaginary characters, okay? So... I don't have any friends who are gnomes. So, so where's <laughs> yeah, where we is somewhere or right Where's now? Luna or... now? <laughs> Uh, Luna's dead, okay? <laughs> Luna, Luna may appear in other things, but probably will not appear on the one-shots anymore. Okay. Courtesy of Zack. Yeah, thanks to Zack. The Zack yeah. attack got her. The greatest murder hobo ever. Yeah, other than Caitlyn. Caitlyn, uh, Caitlyn, Caitlyn's still pretty good. Caitlyn used Eunice Monk Slayer, so Caitlyn yeah, is still she the Yeah, she, 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 she still like, has the belt. Yeah, you know? she's got the belt. She's Plus, also, title, I mean, her first appearance was killing, you know, all the, the killing like those NPCs and the farmers. Killing all those poor farmers. That's yeah, right. Yeah, they were farmers. So, Just but trying uh, to feed their families. Okay. Well, <coughs> let's talk about like some of the traits of the the halfling and the gnome. One of the things, okay, like the half, have been. Well, halflings. I mean, what they're known for luck more than anything other than their hospitality and things like that. You know so. what? If I had to put one word onto uh, halflings, it would be carefree. You uh-huh. know, they're all about hospitality. They're lazy whereabouts. And I'm sticking mostly with uh, um, Tolkien hobbits here for that. But carefree, they just kind of go with the breeze like, oh, hey, an adventure. Cool. Yeah, I might join that. Sure. Why not? <laughs> well, I don't me... want to fight. I'd rather sneak around. And then they're just so they're to me they are the hippies of D because then you have the kenders who they don't steal anything nothing no, belongs it just, to them and it just sort they of just falls in their it, pocket you know? what, yeah, let me throw one there out falls what about in the willow willow is willow a halfling or a gnome i think he's a gnome i think he's a gnome. i think he's a gnome i've also mm-hmm. never seen that movie because yeah, he's scared. Yeah. <gasps> what? I Mad look Mardigan? At him and I'm like, no. Uh, Mad Mardigan no. is the single greatest fighter of our time, next to Top Gun Maverick. Well, Kyle, <laughs> you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to watch it because the series is coming to Netflix. Yep. So. Series. Yeah. Yep. Dis- Disney starve for money, or I'm sorry, yep. Netflix, Netflix starve for, star for money. I was gonna say Disney's putting out tons of content. What are you talking about? Mm-hmm. Actually, I haven't seen that movie either, so to be fair. Yeah! Holy shit. So, David, wow. uh, since you and I are the only true nerds on this show, <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. are, are they gnomes or are they halfling? Because, I mean, Willow, Willow's pretty squared away, but uh, who's who's the head honcho? Burblechuck? Burblechuck. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm saying they're gnomes, man. Uh, I'm going with that. They're so. fighting gnomes. Mm-hmm. They, they, they are, are the best cross between dwarves and gnomes. And Willow has access to magic, so you know, there's, there's farmer that. magic. Yeah, that's true. <coughs> I can't believe you two haven't seen that movie. That movie is a staple in our. I know, it's I know. I have, there are plenty of movies that you'd probably be shocked that me, a geek, total and absolute geek, have not seen. So dot dot. dot. I don't love her. She kicked me in the face. Yes. <laughs> Classic Mad Mardigan. Hey, you had the power couple, fantasy power couple in that. Yeah. Val Kilmer and Joanne Wiley Kilmer in that. So yeah, they played opposites of each other. So anyway. That's it. What else are we discussing on this? <laughs> All right. Let's talk about sub races, guys. Woo! All You're right. muted, Kyle. Muted shit. I was going to say... Talking about gnomes and halflings in particular, let's talk a little bit maybe about breaking stereotype. I know ah. as a six foot tall guy, whenever I play a gnome or a halfling, I do tend to have a, a specific character evolution, which is the helpless little guy striving for power. Uh, Frank is nodding his head because my very first character Colors in Frank. <laughs> was uh, uh, Ren Shimmerleaf, who was an illusionist wizard, uh, who was co- Jesse and his song Gnomish Rape was written about poor Ren Shimmerleaf because he would always end up having these beautiful women attracted to him or these horses attracted to him. 
and he had no idea what to do with women and would <laughs> color spray them because he was terrified of them and then run away as fast as he could. And eventually oh things got really bad for him and he ended up turning uh, uh, to devils and blood magic uh, just to have a big bully that he could control around so that he wasn't helpless all the time. And yeah, he turned evil. Turned really evil. That went dark, dude. <laughs> wow. No, oh. if Biff was after you all the time, man, you'd summon a Balrog too, man. <laughs> nice. Nice. No, but uh, how do you guys, you know, we are talking about short characters. Carol, I know you probably have a different view on things from way down there. Um, oh, shut up. I'm not that short. Well, let's I talk about it. This time. Time. Totally. Let's... Frank, you're muted, man. <laughs> Damn it. Those were good lines, too. <laughs> <laughs> the nice. muted lines are always the best They're ones. always the best ones. <laughs> I said Carol was four foot two. She's about half gnome. No, I'm actually, five, I'm actually five foot four. So I'm not tall, but I'm not super short. I know people who are shorter than me. So <laughs> Yeah, dead people. No, uh, no, no. Um, one of, one um, of my but, good um, friends that they went to school with, she, I don't think she ever got above. I don't think she ever got above about four, nine, four, ten. She was short. My Carol, brother, Carol's also a bard, uh, and short people got no, no reason. reason. <laughs> yeah. No yeah. people got no, no reason. reason. <laughs> nah, I'm not that short. Oh, but, come on. But Jeez. we were talking about breaking stereotypes. I mean, I think Luna broke those stereotypes. I mean, I think Dewey did the best of breaking Dewey stereotypes. Dewey was really good. Yeah, Dewey a barbarian was... gnome, you know? So. Or. Was it the biggest min maxer move ever done? Probably. Oh. <laughs> a gnome with it's advantage Kyle. on all saves. A Kyle probably knowing Kyle, it probably was a min maxer move. It was a min max move. Absolutely. Totally no, was. I admit that yeah, really. Yeah, there's no question it was. Well, you but even I made one... a story out of it, so you could have mm -hmm. gone one step you further. You can read all thirty two it... pages of his background. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, I was going to say you could have gone, or you could have gone Paladin. That would have been a good one, too. We have, yeah, no where your Paladin saves are, like, boosted, paddling, like, massively paladin. high. Mm -hmm. But break stereotypes, go break against, stereotypes. go, go against alignment, you know? Evil gnome, evil halfling. I mean, you know, gnomish crime boss, you know? Gnomish moron. That's oh. true. Uh, yeah. <laughs> But as I said, I was saying I think Luna breaks it because she's not like a cheery, she's not the cheery type that well, I loves to tinker and that. No, no, no. Life not is anymore. way too short. Life she's, is way too short. Yeah, she found out for sure. Life is just way too short. And it's rather everything's futile here and everything. The only thing that matters is what's beyond here. That's the long game. And that's to me not a very gnomish point of view. But I did it because I like the alliteration, you know, with the alliteration with all the G's. <laughs> Gnome, goth, grave cleric. So. Wow. But, you know. Wow, and I thought I was terrible for the way I designed my character. <laughs> <laughs> I find stupid shit like that. For the one shots, for campaign characters, I put a bit more thought into them. <laughs> so, yeah. David. You want to hit something up or you mm. want to move on to the next subject? All right. What is our next subject? Yeah. What is are, it? How do gnomes fit in the world? How do you make them fit in your D&D &D world? Or how as a player do you make gnomes interesting? Well, how they fit in the world? Come on. They're small. Well, you can put them anywhere. Uh, you can put them anywhere. They're stackable. You can put them <laughs> Uh, no, I really like the way the gnomes are, are portrayed in Eberron. Eberron, they mm. run journalism. They run, uh, you know, the messaging system, teleportation and things like that. So they're kind of like, yeah. you know, the facilitators of that. Keepers They're of also keys. kind of like the mafia, too, if they I remember are. correctly. That's why, I, that's why I love them, man. In Eberron, they're awesome. They're awesome. 
Eberron is a good campaign, though. It's a great oh, yeah. setting. Great oh, yeah. setting. So that's the setting that I like, and that's the way I, I really like to see them used is, is things like that. Just go against the grain, go against the the stereotype, and yeah, just you know, let their little freak flag fly. fly I wow. guess <laughs> you know. I mean, they're just you know. I mean, yeah. I mean, they're they're versatile, you know. So, but. Sure. Yeah, that's what I would do. I, I'd really like to see a gnome crime boss. Yeah. The home crime Gosh, boss. Gosh, what, what's that Zootopia movie? And they have the Godfather, but he's a vole. Uh-huh. So he's like super tiny and he's got these big polar bear bodyguards. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, that's ex- Oh. I mean, it, you know what though? Right. A halfling crime boss would be pretty good too, though. That almost, that almost fits the stereotype. I think Regis technically became that. <laughs> hey, I believe he ended up with the guild and they have went all of a sudden done. So he essentially became a halfling crime boss. And it was, yeah, it was a good stick. And of course, you said, because he's actually. Talk about an good, evil halfling. Yeah. He's it, not evil. So. Well, I mean, he mind controlled half the people in the Thieves Guild so he could end up being the crime boss. You know who would be it's a good true. halfling crime boss? Joe Pesci from the Lethal <laughs> Weapons series. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, true. And surprisingly enough, he is in the D&D movie. So mm-hmm. there you go. Mm-hmm. So I yeah. like, um, yeah, I loved his character in the Lethal Weapon movies. He just gets. Gets. You need it. Leo, Leo gets. gets. Yeah. Uh, his explanation on explaining how money is laundered, that was that was spot on spot to the on. T and they're like you're just a criminal <laughs> <laughs> so yeah I would love to see either a gnome or a halfling Prime boss. Joe yeah, Pesci. Based, based on Joe Pesci were so. we just going with how gnomes fit in the world or are we doing halflings too Because both we... yeah both. absolutely everything that's why he said halflings and gnomes I will say, uh, uh, Frank, I thought your big bad guy at the end of the last campaign was a gnome because at the very beginning we had a a prophet tell us that the gnomes had fucked everyone over in some way or another. Probably Uh, was supposed to be. He changed the ending 20 times. I think he changed the ending like 20 times as you guys fucked with the campaign. Yeah, there were a lot of storylines that got abandoned during that campaign. (laughs) I swear, I would love Seven to see Seven deadly him. sins down to the four horsemen of evil. Uh, yeah. And then you didn't even do down that. Down to just one big thing. You made, and I said it was obvious. When I thought about the four horsemen was pretty obvious. I could see it. He's like, guess but it. But yet there were only two. I would love was, to see. Wait, wait, you had Bush, wait, not Bushman. You had, uh, fuck, I'm going to forget the name. Sorry. Guys, guys, we're talking about knowns. I know, I'm sorry. Harry. Carol, gosh. Focus. Focus. I was going to say, I You guys went off to... on Joe Pesci. I can go off on the kid. No, absolutely not. I was saying, yeah. I would love to see like a one shot or something like that with gnomes and halflings based on Peaky Blinders, the, the series. That would be really show. interesting. I like it. I knew Kyle would love that idea. Peaky <laughs> Blinders? Yeah, yeah, it's a show. I've, it is a I've show. heard of it, but I've never watched it. It's the it Irish is. mob. There you go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're like obsessed with the mob right now. He's wanted by the mob right now. I wanted am. by the mob, yeah. I, I'm actually in the mob. So. Luckily, we have so view, few viewers on this show. This is only one of the few live things he could do. Exactly. And not be recognized. <laughs> Oh, all right, but guys, uh, let's go around. That's gnomes, that's halflings. If you want to talk more, go hit us up on our Discord channel and we will talk gnomes and halflings all night long. But for now, let's go around final thoughts, starting with Carol. With me, with you. Uh, I don't know. Let's see. I I think we've said it, although I don't know if I actually answered the whole thing about halflings and gnomes. Oh, I know what. My final thought will be this. Here's how I would put halflings in my world. I'd make them the diplomats and the traitors. 
I think they've got a good name. I like their good naturedness that they have. And I think they work very well with people. So I think they would be great for moving goods around legally not, and illegally. I could see both. Um, and I liked his have idea. as much room to carry stuff. Yeah, which is why they have carts and pack animals, dear. Sure. Yeah. Oh, speaking of and, carrying things up your bums, uh, Frank, final thoughts. <laughs> uh, I, I'd have to go with uh, kind of what we were building up to with Dewey and making them all militant barbarians as gnomes, <laughs> uh, whereas we kept the halflings as flower children. Mm -hmm. Peace, love, and experimental drugs. Uh, but I really like the idea of gnomish barbarians who still rely on knowledge, uh, <laughs> making them two-fisted troublemakers. Mm -hmm. And Joe Pesci. Frank, and we Joe need Pesci. to talk about some uh, Dewey Daco Mel future things. <laughs> yeah, we, we need to revisit this campaign. There's a lot of things, I think. And what is, uh, you uh, what's had your final cacophony? Uh, double Thibbet. Double Thibbet. Oh, I love you him. It. We deliver it. Uh, he's a, he's oh, yeah. a gnome, so. I mm -hmm. love that character so much. And an asshole, Arnold. And an asshole, <laughs> and a criminal, and a, criminal. a bad guy <laughs> looking to gather power to do horrible oh, yeah. things. An animal him. rights anti activist. Whoa, whoa, hey, I keep Garrett the meth alligator safe. I thought it was. <laughs> a, he was <laughs> out roaming. Through. With my with with Rainier's statue, yeah, exactly. I mean, no one messes with that face. Nobody anyway. does. Oh, David, final thoughts: gnomes, halflings, uh, play them. Uh, they are they are actually yeah. one of the two of my favorite races, and I, I'm I'm ashamed that I don't play them enough. So, so that is true. He is ashamed. Yeah. We're ashamed for you. Yes. <laughs> All right, guys, that is the end of the show tonight. We are going to wave and say goodbye, but remember, catch us on Thursday for the Cred Campaign. If you can't watch that, uh, what is wrong with you? Go over to YouTube, watch it on the archives, or the tiny URL thing that's going on below there, or listen to us. And, you know, nothing, nothing tells you what a calamity it is, like watching Saturday's show <laughs> Calamity, which actually has no tie-in whatsoever. But I feel like when Cthulhu rises, calamity happens. Mm -hmm. that's oh, that's good. Wow. After that's that, really good. the Franks will take over the world. Frank, I can't believe we're on Frank game. the same show and you have not brought up 11 minutes. <gasps> you didn't bring um, up the it, 11 it, it's, minutes? It's been, a, it's been a rough day. Yeah. I was about oh, to say well, that's the 11 minutes I went up. over last time. No, 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 no. no. from the calamity, uh, calamity campaign. Genius here, uh, rolled D12 uh, after finding his father had been poisoned by a serpent. Uh, so uh -huh. I made him roll a D12, and he was very cheery that he rolled an 11. Unfortunately, the roll was for how many minutes his father would suffer in agony as <laughs> David held him. And it was an 11. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of quasi traumatic. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. So we'll pick that I up again next week. It was week. somewhat like the Bill Murray scene in Zombie Land. Only a lot more uh, uh, frothing at the uh, mouth. Uh, mouth and, and yeah. Pain. Yeah. He. Uh, Pretty much. Yeah. I, I, made him pay I for see it. the light. You know, I he was very proud of the one percent killing ratio and he was very proud of his 11 minutes until he found out what both were so <laughs> yeah oh, uh, hi rolls are not always your friend boys and girls there you go yeah, and you if go. you learn anything valuable tonight high rolls are not your friends guys wave mm -hmm. at the camera let's say good night we will see you later Bye. Bye. muted transition we're out